Welcome to House of Prayer. How y'all doing out there? Hey, they are ready to go. Well, just so you know, you're like, are we five minutes late? No, we're not. We set the time, so we're not late. Uh, no, uh, but we, it has been one. Of, have anybody ever had one of those weeks or weekends or especially Sundays, months? All right. Okay, if everything, I, I think we went through four printers breaking in the last two days. I think we, uh, we had all kinds of electrical issues this morning. We left the baptistry out while there was some pumping issues and some communication issues. So this is, I, I said, okay, well, God, you must want to point that out. So we had two people actually sign up and want to be baptized after last week. So this is a reminder, God said, you're going to have, not our planning, uh, that if you need to get baptized, if you want to get baptized, if you want to know more about it, see us. Okay, there you go. That was from God. You're welcome. Um, here's the deal. Then I realized you just preached on complaining. Hmm. God's like, you're going to stop complaining? <laughs> All right, bet. Uh, that's what, God didn't say that, but uh, but that's what it's felt like a little bit today. Uh, we're going to be jumping into gratitude, which is great. Uh, it is awesome, and it will be fun. It's going to be a fun study for us today. And how many of you, be thinking, because I'm going to give you a couple minutes on the front side of the message. Uh, I have some, I have some uh, testimonies of when complaining came up in my family, anybody have some of that stuff come up in your family? Don't worry, I'm not going to call on you right now. You guys, you guys get so scared when I say you're going to have to talk. All right. Uh, but yeah, it's been coming up. People have been telling, oh, yeah, I came up in my family. Oh, I caught my wife. You're not supposed to do that. Catch yourself. Okay. Uh, but but we will. I want to hear a little bit from you. You're going to hear a little bit from me uh, how that's been going. And, uh, and man, um, so... Uh, for members, if you're a member here, if you're not, we'd like to have you be one. You can see the people under the eye, they or me or staff or whoever. We can tell you how to how to be a member. And uh, but for, we have a members meeting today at noon, uh, shortly after the service. And so I want to remind, remind you of that. And something else. Ah, there we go. Thank you. It's amazing. It just appeared to me. It just popped in my head right there. Okay. Uh, uh, our child dedication, usually baby, but because of our delay the last couple of years, we are, if you have not had a chance to dedicate, especially this is for the parents saying, hey, we are dedicating our, our, our children to follow God and to raise them in God's house and around his ways, and uh, we want to join with you as a church to do that. Uh, please get signed up. We're planning on doing that next week, and, uh, and we're waiting to hear from a lot of you to confirm. So please confirm with us and make sure we have all the details. It's going to be a fun time next week, you guys. So uh, plan on that. That's there. Okay. All that said, are you guys ready to worship? <laughs> They're not as ready. I talk too much. Okay, let me pray. Uh, God, we love you. Thank you for today. Uh, just thank you for, uh, thank you for how you move and work. Even in chaos, even when things don't, aren't going right like we want them to, you're moving and working. Your plan has never changed. Your plan is never thwarted. You're moving, working, changing, doing the miraculous in our hearts, around us, through us. We praise you for that. God talked about complaining last week. We were all convicted. I was convicted. Uh, we were all convicted. And I know you've been continuing to work on that in our hearts to the point where you're, I believe you prepared us for what we need to look at today in your word, and that's gratitude, thankfulness, God. Open our hearts for that. And now, Jesus, we just want to worship you. We just want to come in these next few, these next few minutes. We just come and want to worship you. Holy Spirit, we need you to do that. We need you to help us to worship in spirit and in truth. Take everything out, out, else out of our minds. Take everything else that's been going on in our week. Just let us focus on Jesus, Holy Spirit. Jesus, we just love you. We praise you. I can't wait. We get to celebrate communion and celebrate you and our thankfulness and gratefulness for you and our salvation, your blood that was shed. We praise you that we get to do that together today. We praise you for who you are, Jesus. It's right now. We want to come worship you with everything that we have. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and worship. There's a name that levels mountains It calls out highways through the sea And I've seen his power unravel battles Right in front of me I 
There's a faith that stands defined. It sends Goliath to his knees. And I've seen his praise unravel shadows right off my feet. Let's do some of that right now. That's the power of your name. Just a mention makes a way. Giants fall and strongholds break, and there is healing. That's the power of your name. And the same that rolled the grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. Hey. The power like the name. Come on, let's declare it. Well, there's a hope that calls our courage. And in the furnace, son of praise, the kind of daring expectation that every prayer I make is on an empty grave. That's the power of your name. Just a mention makes a way. Giants fall and strongholds break, and there is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. There's no power like the mighty name. Of Jesus. Hey. We declare it today, Lord. I see you taking ground. I see you press ahead. Your power is dangerous to the enemy's camp. Come on. You still do miracles, you will do what you said, for you're the same God now that you've always been. Your spirit breaking now, your kingdom moving in, your victory claims the crown that the enemy had. You still do Let's lift up the name of Jesus, you guys. Come on, let's worship him. Let's worship him. He is worthy. The splendor of the king Clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great! is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Come 
on, sing it out. Age to age we stand, and time is in His hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. But God has created one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, you are worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our Amen. He's a good God, isn't he? Amen. Amen. I got a scripture for you. I'm trying to catch my breath. It's, it's not only been a morning, it's been a month, y'all. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> in Romans 8, 1 through 4. I'm realizing that this is something that every one of us, on some level, deal with. And because of this, the enemy takes it and just runs with it. So one of my very best friends, when she was in Bible college, they told them, there's a few different principles that we want to teach you, but the first of which is the first rule of kids, and that is, when you find yourself in one, get out as soon as possible. And it could be a pit of self-condemnation. I can't believe I did that. Or I can't believe I dropped the ball on that. Or it could be telling the future, you're never gonna. You're always gonna. You will never. Or it could be always thinking, well, you always do this. Or he always does that. And he never meets me here or she never meets me there and it's a bad place to be in you guys and when we're there for so long it's just like breathing like we it's just second nature and it's one of those areas that Satan will just run with in our lives if we let him and you know the the, 
the trials that we go through, the messages that, that God is laying on Ben's heart, this is God speaking to us, you guys. Like he's saying, Sadie, you know, like, this is what I'm saying to you. And William and Becky and Lindsay and Bennett, he's saying, I want to give you the opportunity to realize that you've got these beliefs in your life or you've got these habits in your life. And they're kind of putting a hindrance with your relationship with me. But you know what, guys? As hard as it is as we're going through these trials, we need to be thankful for the fact that we serve a God that loves us enough and cares about us enough that he wants to point these things out to us, to clean these things out of us so that our worship of him is more true, that our steadfastness in him is more solid, that when the winds come, we aren't just blown about to and fro, that we're steadfast, even though the gales are blowing. Jesus is in front of us blocking that wind from us, you guys. That's the God we serve. So in Romans 8, 1 through 4, therefore no condemnation now exists for those in Christ Jesus, because the Spirit's law of life in Christ, <coughs> in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. What the law could not do since it was limited by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in flesh like ours under sin's domain and as a sin offering in order that the law's requirements would be accomplished in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. God has given us such an opportunity. There are so many things that he's just saying, just give it to me. We strive and we work and we work and we strive. But it was accomplished on the cross. So let's consider that today as we, as we go into this third song. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. So, Father, we come before you, Lord. In the midst of everything that's being thrown at us, Lord, it's sometimes it's like standing in front of a fire hydrant with the, the cap completely off. Or, but, Father, you're faithful and you're good and you're there with us all the time. And, Father, you're just telling us, Lord, just step out of the way. Step out of the way of that line of fire and let me. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that as we sing this next song, you would help us to open our hearts even more to you and your truth. And Father, as we move into the message, Lord, help us, Father God, to put down the distractions, put down the things that we've carried in here today, Lord, and just hear from you, Lord, and just sit in your presence, Father. Lord, we praise you, and we thank you, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. was a wretch, I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. But sin separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I had. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. Brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Amen. You 
took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, and then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Father, we pray. And it's in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we commit the rest of this service to you. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you would hide Ben behind the cross. Lord, that we wouldn't see him or hear him, Lord, but it would be all you. And Father, I pray against any hindrances that the enemy would bring against this body during this time today, Father, that you would thwart it and send it out the door, Lord, where it belongs, Father. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kids, you're free to go to Kids Church, and now we just want to invite everyone to speak words of life and encouragement to each other.
right. All right. Well, that was good. Good job worshiping. And uh, man, you guys, you guys were in it. Uh, I just love, I love that time. Uh, getting to share that with you and it's the highlight of my week and I enjoy it. Okay. So what did we talk about last week? Uh, what? Complaining. All right. Good, good, good. I'll, I'll give you mine. So as I was driving home with Kendi, I realized, right, is that when I said it? You, you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I promise I'm not making it up. When I, when I said I needed to apologize for the kids, it hit me. Yeah, that was on the way home. So on the way home, you all remember, my, how many of you remember my story, my confession about the house? Yeah. The rest of you weren't here. Ah, uh, okay. Um, uh, yes, I, I, so then on the way home, it hit me. I'm like, wait, <laughs> my kids have been hearing that all week or all the whole time. I'm like, ah. Oh. So when I got home. I had to I had to apologize to my kiddos and and then it was funny. Kenny and I have been all week and like, oh, is that complaining? How many of you have been doing that? Like, oh, is that complaining? Um, I, have she been? Have you been doing that to me or me to you? No, I don't know how we've been. So we've been catching those, which is awesome. And I've been here and I've been hearing comments about that all week, which is great. You guys are hearing what God is telling us, what God taught us, and and uh, it's been impactful for me. How many, anybody, anybody have a quick story that happened that's, that's, you might say, hey, I, I caught myself complaining, caught my wife complaining. No, don't, don't do that unless you, any, anybody, you got one? Anybody? Any got a funny one? Come on. No? You all are quiet. No complaints. Look at you. This is the most grateful. I don't even need to preach this message. It's the most grateful crowd in America right here. Okay. Uh, all right. Done. Uh, you can go home. All right. Uh, all right. So I'm not going to give you that opportunity then. So we're going to be jumping into this day. We're going to see Moses really, because, again, we were dealing with children of Israel where they, where they fell off the cliff with this thing of complaining and murmuring and how, how we looked at it, it was sin and we broke all that down. It's funny. The first passage, I'm going to actually read it to you. Um, but the first passage we're going to look at today is really Moses kind of giving the children of Israel, this is fast forwarding, he's giving them a pep talk before they go, get, actually get to go in the promised land. And he's going to hit hard this thing of gratitude. And so this is, we, were, we found the me mindset, the me mindset was, come on now, help me out, the me mindset from last week was complaining. The he mindset is gratitude all right okay let's try it again the the me mindset our flesh our sin is the he mindset is okay one more time the the he the me mindset is you guys got that one better the he mindset is ah okay we got it now okay so that's what we're gonna look at that's going to be the, we're going to, many times we got to repeat it, right, teachers? You just got repetition is the key to learning. Okay, so, so here we go. There's a kind of life that some of us live. It's a particular approach, or we talked about mindset last week. That kind of grovels and slums and flies under the radar to sort of down, dirty, cloudy, damp, depressing, ungrateful, unthankful, negative place. And that's a, complace, a place of complaining, murmuring, griping, whining, sort of life. And by the way, we've all spent days there. Every one of us has spent days in that place. We all have. We've all been there. But there's another kind of living, a life that soars above, refuses to focus on the negative, refuses to focus and have that be the priority of our life refuses to dwell there. Uh, up there, the air is clean, the sun is shining, the future is as bright as the promises of God, and you've ever flown up there, if you've experienced that, we want to live our life there. And that's part of that living that life is God's mindset of gratitude. It's all through scripture. In fact, dude, I, there was the hardest thing about this message. I, I, I read so many articles. I've been reading books. I've been listening to sermons. The hardest thing about this was what I call defoliating because if I hadn't, this would have been like 15 pages outline and you would get hungry. I promise you. Okay, so don't worry. I cut it down. But that was the hardest part because God says so much about this. So we're going to start with looking at that challenge from Moses. We're going to look at three different scriptural basis and kind of rank those. And then we're going to look at application. All right. I just gave you, showed my cards. It's in your notes. Uh, that's what we're going to do today. So how do we get there? How do we get to this life of gratitude? We all have experienced a life of complaining. We all, we all relate to that. 
How do we put off this complaining mindset? How do we fill our life with gratitude? First and foremost to God, but we're going to talk about others as well. First of all, what is gratitude? Gratitude is the quality, or I, I like mindset still from the, we're going to be using that word a lot, of being thankful. It's the pattern of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation and, re, and to return kindness. That's what it is. We're going to see it all through scripture. But first, I want you to, and this isn't going to be on the screens, Moses gave this verbally. Moses gave this challenge to the children of Israel, and this is a piece of it, this challenge to them because he knew their weaknesses, he knew their propensity to complain, he knew their propensity to do the very things he's going to warn us, and by the way, we all have those propensities as well, it's called the sin nature. So, I want you to listen, it's going to be a little different, I want you to listen, and I want to bring this challenge verbally just as Moses did, listen, Deuteronomy 8. Chapter six, or chapter eight, verses six through eighteen. Listen, this is Moses talking to his congregation, getting ready to go in the promised land. He won't get to go, but he's challenging them. He says this: Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to Him and revering Him, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, deep springs gushing into valleys and hills. A land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey. A land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. It must be Butte. Ah, uh, anyway, uh, when, sorry. <laughs> when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. There's, see, there's that thankfulness. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Failing to observe his commands, his laws, and decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, this is so us, this is so man, this is so can be so me, right? Listen, otherwise... When you eat and are satisfied, when you, build, when you build fine houses and settle down, when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of a hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors have never known, to humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced the wealth for me. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. The whole, that whole section of scripture, Moses is challenging them, don't forget who is blessing you, don't forget God, don't forget gratefulness, why? Because he knew they would, and did they? Yes, they did, and do we? Yes, we do. Attitudes are the, and, and, and mindsets are patterns of thinking made over a long period of time. And we, we, did, we saw last week we can change that mindset. We, we need to put off that complaining mindset today with a thankful and grateful mindset. Thankful, grateful life is filled with gratitude and joy. Those who choose complaining choose to spend a lifetime in the wilderness. When I was thinking about this, I was thinking about who's the, who's the dude, is it, is it, is it, is it Linus? No, who's the dude where the rain cloud follows him all around and like strikes him and all that stuff? Who's that? What's that? Pig pen? Oh, that's the dirt cloud. <laughs> okay. I, who's that? Wait, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm making up a cartoon. Okay, there we go. Uh, but but I, I know you, you've seen on cartoons where the, the storm cloud is always over the dude. Yeah. Okay. Did I make that up? You all have seen it. Okay. Okay. Th is that kind of what living this complaining negative life is? Like everywhere you go, it's like the dude, it's like, right, you, the dude going around, he's smelling everything. He's like, stinks in the car, right? It stinks at home. My kids stink. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that's, that's true. Uh, uh, my, my, everything stinks. And then he looks in the mirror and figures out he has Limburger cheese on his mustache, right? Everybody, okay. Okay, that's what complaining does. Makes everything stink. Makes everything bad. 
okay, now we're jumping into gratitude. Is this really important to cry? Does he really care? <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to see in our first story how much he cares, what he has to say to us. Because he has a lot, because he loves us, like we learned last week, so much. He doesn't want this for us. By the way, there's nothing natural to your flesh about gratitude. Gratitude is not natural. I think for a Christian, I believe the feeling of gratitude or gratitude on the inside not being expressed, I think that's fruit of the Holy Spirit. I think expression of gratitude still isn't natural. We still have to listen to the Holy Spirit, and we still really usually stink at it. Some people, are, some people are more yielded to God and the Holy Spirit than others here. That's what I want us to learn. We need the Holy Spirit for this, so I'm going to pray and we're going to jump in it. God, we need you. Holy Spirit, this isn't natural. This thing of gratitude, it, it's awesome. You know what joy and you know what you bring through this and you know the work that you do in our hearts through this. As we yield to you and submit and make the decision, the the. The supernatural work that you do in our hearts and lives is amazing. God, so much so that the natural world, that the leadership world, that, the, uh, that, that, that people in the world have seen this, that gratitude actually transforms, and, and that is really your law. That's your truth. Let us get it today from your word. God, we need you. I need you. In Jesus, we just pray this in your name. Amen. So let's check it out. Let's, let's jump in. You see it on your notes. Sometimes gratitude is the only logical response. All right? Sometimes gratitude is the only logical response. I also have in my notes, I have this, and we're gonna, we'll, we'll classify this. Uh, we're going to have high school, we're going to have college, and we're going to have graduate school. Also, if you're thinking football, Matt, Chris, you guys will appreciate this. We're going to have the rookies, we're going to have JV, and we're going to have... Varsity, I knew you. All right, varsity. Uh, so that you, you can understand this progression. Are, are they better? Are they easier? No. No, the, the high school gratitude, the rookie gratitude, uh, if you ask the rookies, football is still hard for them. It's as hard as it is for the varsity. It's different. Uh, it, it, now, if a, if a varsity player went down to rookie, this is easy. So as we work through this, as God grows us, I want to see that. I want to see that progression. Sometimes this gratitude is the only logical response. Let's look at that scripturally. Look at Luke 17. Great story about Jesus. They're all great about Jesus, aren't they? Amen. Uh, Luke 17. You can follow along with this one. It's on the screens, in your Bibles, on your, on your phone, whatever. As he was going into a village, he is Jesus. Ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. And he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked we're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Awesome story. Everyone needs God. These ten lepers all needed God. Leprosy in this day was a life sentence. You didn't get healed. You were outcast from society. You lost everything. You lost your vocation. You lost your home. You lost your family. We could go deeply into that also. I could go, this is down. Uh, I, won't, I, won't, I won't bore you with the details of where this is geographically, but um, where this was by Samaria, it was probably... A, where the lepers were all together, they would be mixing. And one of the only places Samaritans and Jews would be mixing would be lepers' colonies or lepers' groupings like this. We know by, by what he said there, it's inferred that the other nine were probably Jews. The one that came back was a Samaritan. They're like, really? Only the one who, who is this foreigner who doesn't believe like us? The only, he's the only one that came back and was thankful? It's interesting. 
Everyone needs God. Only a few thank him personally. And really only a few experience him powerfully. This man did. Oh, all ten were healed. I don't think God took back their healing because they weren't thankful. We don't see that. I don't think that's God's, uh, God's nature. But, but then what is this that says? Has no one returned to give praise except this foreigner? Rise, go, your faith has made you well. I believe he's referring to spiritual wealth. I believe he's referring to this guy expressed his faith, his belief in Jesus, came back and expressed his thankfulness and worship. Faith grows in the soil of thankfulness. Every person comes to a fork in the road and they must uh, of life and must believe and thank God or not. Romans tells us this, Romans 1, says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood uh, from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Saying, hey, even in, the, in nature all around us, we see the fingerprints of God everywhere. People are without excuse. But then this, this is an interesting verse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their, and, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Man, so he's saying, here's the deal. So many places, thankfulness is attached to the faith even of to belief. Like it comes as we come in contact and know who God is, as we come in contact and know what he's done for us, just as much as these lepers. And they were healed. They had their whole life was gone, and all of a sudden they were healed. And you're like, that is a logical response. They all were. Come on now. Somebody comes in this room, and, and Oprah style, you get a car, and you get a car, right? Uh, and you get a car. Like obvious response is going to be. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome, Oprah. Okay. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that would be the logical response. Here are these lepers. Their life is changed. They're healed. The logical response would be, thank you. Wow, this dude healed me. This is God. This is amazing. And one out of ten did. And I wonder how often that logical response, because we're hard on the lepers, right? You ungrateful so-and-so, huh? And we're hard on these guys, this logical response. How often does God do these miracles in our life? And we're like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Oh, yeah, that's great. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love, for his wonderful deeds for mankind. That's another obvious kind. Man, I'm going to give thanks for God, these wonderful deeds he's done for me. But here's the deal, guys, whether it's God or whether it's people around us, this high school gratitude, we got to get it. It's the first step, man. We, if we can't get this up, man, where we're thankful and grateful for our salvation, for the blood. We sang that song, right? If we're thankful and grateful for the blood, if we're thankful and grateful for Jesus who died for us, if we're thankful and grateful and we don't say that to him, we don't show it. It's one thing with Jesus was just kind of expressed. How about with other people? We see that with Paul, and there's several verses we could look at where that with Paul, where he's like, I'm always thankful for you. Every time I pray, I'm, I'm thanking God for you. Man, you bless my heart, and these other things. But how often do we not show our gratitude? A couple things with that. As we're, we're still in this high school area of gratitude, this response to someone doing something kind or good for you. Unexpressed gratitude communicates ingratitude. Do you know that? You're like, well, how many of you are like me? You're like, well, I, I feel grateful, right? You ever been there? You ever, I was thinking this week, I had to, I had to stop. It's, I, all this conviction comes, I'm doing all this study, and I get convicted. It's not fair. You guys get it for like an hour. I'm complaining, you, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, just, just saying. Uh, just wanted to get and test you, see if you caught that. Uh, but I'm getting it for weeks, and so... Uh, this week, there's been some people I've been reaching out to. I'm like, man, I suck at this grateful thing. I don't say it enough. And so I was telling Kendi and, and, uh, and others I've been reaching out to, more others I'm going to be reaching out to. Because no matter how much you feel it, because there's often times, and I believe that's why I said I've come to believe that uh, that unexpressed gratitude, I think that's the work of the Holy Spirit inside you. 
I don't, that's not from your flesh. That's not from you. Uh, I believe that gratitude, like, oh, I'm really grateful. So, so here's the thing. I get tricked in my head, be like, oh, I'm so grateful for my life. And it's inside. Guys, how many of you have ever been there? Like, I, I tell you, I love you all the time. They're like, mm, mm. on the inside, I have not heard. Or, or how, many of you, how many of you guys ever do this? No, I told you all about that. We never had that conversation. Anybody ever had that in their head? In their? No? Okay. Okay. So these things happen on the inside. That's awesome that it's there. But to Kendi, for example, that unexpressed gratitude can communicate ingratitude. To her, it doesn't matter what I feel. It matters what comes out of my mouth. Oh, help us all. By the way, that ingratitude can then feel like rejection. Something that hinders a lot of our relationships. Are we grateful? Do we tell the people that we're great? Uh, th- this is this this me- this this message of ingratitude is this: what we say when we're not grateful. I could have done this without. I, I could have done this without you, so I don't really owe you anything. That's what. That's the message that we're saying when we're not saying anything at all. <laughs> There's a song about that. Anyway, uh, when we're not saying anything at all. Gratitude can feel like it, but here's why. Here's oftentimes I think why, and I was thinking about this week, and I was, I was like, man, is this true? Gratitude can feel like an admission of weakness, like you could not accomplish what you have accomplished without help. Gratitude is evidence of maturity and evidence that you are getting your life in proper perspective, starting with Jesus and God and who he is, and then with other people. And let's be like the one who went back to thank him. Let's be like the one that went back to thank him. Love it. Our, our guys, and this is where there's going to be football analogies all through this. It's because my children say I'm obsessed with football. It's a lie. Um, but but uh, I, I, and sorry, Matt, already. Uh, but uh, I... Our, our, our guys are doing awesome. Chris, Matt, uh, fellow coaches, um, do an awesome job. And, and again, I just, I've said this so many times. It's awesome. The state championships are awesome. Winning is wonderful, right? But I just love the character they're instilling in these boys. I love it. But I, uh, Matt got a Coach of the Year award. Sorry, I told you. Sorry, I'm beforehand. Then it doesn't count, right? And I reached out to him, shot him a text. Hey, man, Congratulations. And I, and I just love this because it's this, it's this response. He's like, that is not, he's like, congratulations to the co- other coaches. Congratulations to the boys, but those other coaches are the one. It's immediate, just reflection of that glory. And I'm like, all right. It kind of hit me this week. I, I, and I've heard the same thing. And that, that, runs through, that runs through the whole program. I've heard the same thing from Chris. I've heard the same thing. Like, I'm like, all right. And by the way, that's not natural to come with winning, and especially pounding people like we get to do. Good job, Matt. Uh, good job. It, that, it, usually pride is built up, and there's an arrogance that comes with that. And it's been beautiful to see this thing of gratitude for each other, this thing of gratitude even in, in football and, and these things. And I love that. So that's high school. Huh, kidding. Uh, that's high school gratitude. Okay, what's this college gratitude? Sometimes gratitude is a decision. Based in reality. That will transform you. So check it out. Look at the 23rd Psalm. M- many of us, I think we have this memorized or it's fresh on our heads. It's awesome. And it's one we go to a lot for comfort. But I want to look at gratefulness. You're like, I don't think it says grateful. But yet it's all through this passage. Check it out. Look, look. Uh, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Stating facts. Reality. I lack for nothing. It's Awesome. He makes me lie down in green pastures, good times. He leads me beside quiet waters. I love those times. This morning was not one of those times. Uh, Okay, quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. We've all been there. It's awesome. This is good so far. He guides me along right past, man, good and reality for his name's sake. And then, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear, fear, fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. That's reality. Even though I'm going through something bad, you're with me. For you are with me. 
your rod and, they sta- and, and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Man, I love this. As I came across this, I'm like, ah, that's it. Here, here's David, and here he's talking about the good times. That's reality. David was extremely br- blessed. Then he's talking about the rough times and the dark valley. That's reality as well, right? And then he's talking about the reality, hey, but it's okay. I can be grateful because God is with me. Because the reality is, that's awesome. God is there. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He's there in the dark times. He's going to comfort me. He prepares the table, even in the presence of my enemies. And, man, there's a whole message in this. We are probably going to do a whole little mini-series on it, so I'm not going to spoil that. But that's an awesome phrase. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. So I love it. The psalmist here is saying, man, how grateful I am. Yeah, good things happen. Bad things happen. But the reality is I feel God's presence and God is with me. And he is working through all of this. It's an awesome thing. Check this out. How many of you uh, you have read uh, Robinson Crusoe, Daniel Defoe? Anybody? Did it take that off? Is that, is that a banned book now? Is it bad? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. You never know anymore. 1719, a, a great story. Man, if you haven't read it, go read it. It's awesome. Man lost at sea, shipwrecked for 27 years. Some of you are like, 27 years on a tropical island. Sign me up. Uh, okay. Uh, shipwrecked. He makes a list. This is so cool. It's so, it's so awesome. He makes a list to decide whether to be thankful or depressed. Right? This is so cool. Some of us should do this. Check, check this out. I'm cast upon a horrible desert island, void of all hopes of recovery. And then he makes this list. He says, uh, how many of you remember this from the book? Anybody remember? This, this is awesome. If you don't, go check. Okay. He says, he says, thankful. He says, he says, oh, oh okay, negative. I am, here's his negative. I am cast upon a horrible desert island, void of all hope of recovery. That's negative. Thankful. But I am alive and not drowned like the rest of the ship's company were. Negative. I'm singled out and separated, as it were, from all the world to be miserable. <laughs> so anybody ever felt that? Yeah. Uh, thankful. I am also singled out from all the ship's crew to be spared from death. And God, who miraculously saved me from death, can deliver me from this condition also. Negative. I have no clothes to cover me. <laughs> I'm naked. All right. Uh, but free. Uh, but thankful. <laughs> but I'm in a hot climate and could not wear them anyway. All right. All right. <laughs> Negative. Uh, I am without any defense or means to resist any violence of man or beast. Thankful. But I'm cast on an island where I see no wild beast to hurt me, unlike the shores of Africa that I have seen. What if I had been shipwrecked there? Negative. I have no soul to speak to or relieve me. Thankful. But God wonderfully sent the ship in near enough to shore that I've gotten out so many necessary things as will either supply my wants or enable me to supply myself even as long as I shall live. You see, life is not a lot more complicated than that. I have a decision to make. I will choose the negative. I will live in in the wilderness or I will choose thankfulness and gratitude and live in the promised land. That's it. This, those decisions, I was like, that's such a good illustration. we got to bring that. That is such an illustration of there's reality, and, and this gratitude is still is based in reality. I can see these things. He, he could see these things. And gratitude, we often, often see, is the door to God's presence. Psalm 100 verse 4 says it this way. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. See this so often applied. This is talking about coming into his presence. He's like, do it. Come in with thanksgiving. Here's the key. Come in with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Gratitude, you see, is walking through the door into God's presence. Gratitude brings freedom spiritually, emotionally, even physically. Remember the story of Jonah? Great story. Remember the story of Jonah? Dude got swallowed by a whale, right? Disobeyed, got thrown overboard, right? Remember all that? He's in the belly of the well for three days, right? This is, this is, this is so cool. This is right at the end of that. Jonah. Watch this. Watch this. Watch Jonah's change of heart. Because Jonah was a pretty, remember? Pretty negative dude, yeah? Oh, yeah. 
he's like, those suckers need to die, right? And he's like, why do I have to tell them? This is terrible. It's Jonah. That's his attitude in the, like, three words. Sorry, Jonah. All right, but that was it, Jonah. But then Jonah 2.9, this is, he's in the belly of the well, right? He finally got this figured out. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, Jonah, <laughs> will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. Watch, watch, watch. Watch the freedom. Okay, watch the freedom that it brings. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Whoo. Jonah, well, there's a change of heart. There is negative. I don't want to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to disobey. It stinks. This is bad. Whoop. <laughs> Th- three days. <laughs> right? <laughs> three days. Uh, I'm going to be grateful now. I'll do everything I said. I'm going to be, I, I, and that's, I love it. I love it that it's shouts of grateful praise. <laughs> I love you, God. You're awesome. You've been so good to me. I'm not dead, right? It's a switch. This is a quote by Matthew Henry, a commentary of old, a uh, great, great dude, great pastor. So, uh, upon meditating on the theft of his wallet, this is so, this is so great. Let me be thankful first. Because he never robbed me before. <laughs> Second, because although he took my purse, he did not, not really purse. Those of you that don't understand purse, that was, a, okay, just making sure. It's a European man bag. Okay, uh, so, <laughs> sorry. Okay, here we go. <laughs> my, he took my purse, he did not take my life. Third, because although he took all I possessed, <laughs> it wasn't much. <laughs> Fourth, because I, I was who I I was robbed uh, because it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. All right. Again, we see this concept. We see it scripturally. We see it in spiritual people. We even see it in the, in the, uh, that, uh, the, uh, the novel that was written, Robinson Crusoe. But all of these are decisions to be grateful based on reality. What he just did was look at all the things in reality. I can see, well, I should be grateful because I'm looking at that. Not it's so big that it happened to me, it's overwhelming like the leper. But like, okay, I see bad things, but yet the good things are so much better. It's based in reality, and those will change your life. Those will transform you. Thirdly, that was JV, now varsity. Sometimes gratitude doesn't make sense. That's when it becomes life and world changing. This is grad school. This is your PhD. This is land flowing with milk and honey. This is peace that passes all understanding. This is, this is varsity level. This is, this is what God wants for us. Paul, we could call Paul the professor of graduate level gratitude, yeah? We see it, man, there's so many verses where he's like, this dude is going through so much. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. He's going through so much, and so reality can get pretty dark. Anybody ever been there where you can't see any light? So reality looks like God's left you. Reality looks like I can't even feel his presence. Reality looks like he's not answering my prayers. I'm on this alone. And reality, man, everything bad is happening. There's nothing good. So you look around, and it's so dark. Reality tells you God's abandoned you. Reality tells you you're all alone. Reality tells you, many times Paul said, everybody's left me. When gratitude doesn't make sense, it starts to shake the world. (laughs) Look at Acts 16. Remember this story? About midnight, Paul, Silas, oh, they were imprisoned, chained, Everything looked bad again. We're praying and singing hymns to God. Gratefulness. Gratefulness in the midst of dark. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Why? That's weird. <laughs> you, why are you being grateful? Why are you being thankful? Why are you singing? Don't you know you're in prison? You're chained up. You're supposed to be whining and complaining like us. That's normal. You guys are weird. It's shaking. And it literally shakes. There's gratefulness, there's prayer to God, they're singing hymns of praise. What's next? Suddenly, 
there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. You see, the gratitude as they're bringing to God, God's like, yeah, that's what I, that's the difference I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for in my people. I am inside, the Holy Spirit is inside you and you are tapping into that ungrateful even when it makes no sense. Yes. Now we're going to shake things up. You can never fully control your circumstances, but you can always control your attitude and mindset. You can never, how many of you control freaks like I can be, huh? I love to be controlled. Our, I love our trips like, okay, what are we doing? One, two, three, right? Anybody? Okay. Uh, and we're resting for 2.2 hours, and then we're, uh, you know, right? Anybody there? I love, <laughs> my poor wife. Okay. But I love, to, I love to have things planned out. I love to have things, this, this thing. This thing spun me out a little bit this morning, and it was, uh, I dropped the ball, we all dropped the ball, and I was like, oh, we still have a bet, and it takes a certain amount of time to drain, and I was like, ah, my heart's like, okay, <laughs> controlling guy, <laughs> you're going to have to preach over the baptistry, okay, why not be, I was like, ah, okay, I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining. that sucks, uh, okay, and I lost, but no, uh, no, no, it's fine, but, um, <laughs> uh, but here's the deal. We can't complain. We can't always control circumstances. We can't control the weather. We can't control when things break. We can't control when things don't go, when people do other things. We can't control when somebody pulls out in front of us. Amen? It happens all the time. Four-way stops are not that hard, people. Okay, we can't control. We can't control those things, but we can control our reaction, our mindset, our attitudes. God has given you that. Control it. Well, how do I do that, Ben? And look, look, check this out. There's more. That was one with Paul. There's so much from Paul we can look at. In every book that he's written, God would that drill this into him. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, give thanks. Oh, my soul, Paul. Come on, man. Give thanks in all circumstances. Really? You jerk. All? Come on. All for this is God's will for you. In Christ Jesus, God wants you to have this type, the type that doesn't make sense, the type that will shake up your family, the type where your extended family are being like, wow, what is different? The type where your boss says, whoa, what is different about this person? The type where your coworkers are like, man, he is not responding like everyone else, where your people at school are like, what is this? Where it starts to shake up the natural context of your environment. That's what God wants for you. That's what God wants for your marriage. That's what God wants for your kids. He wants for your family. He wants for your job. He wants for your neighborhood. That's what he wants. Natural is complaining. It's so funny. I went, went to a game. It was an awesome game. And it's so funny. This, when this is fresh on your mind, did you all get more sensitive to other people complaining too? Don't be judging. We'll talk about that in a few weeks, all right? Don't be judging. But I, I was at the game, and it's so funny. I'm sitting there, and it was it was kind of it was quiet. So all these <laughs> all these conversations are going all around me. You know, the game is awesome. Good things are happening, and then it's I hate these jerseys. You can't see the number. I'm like, okay, really? I was like, it's raining. Okay, it's kind of fun. I don't know, playing in it, it's not that fun. But it's, I'm getting wet. I'm like, dude, those, you're, the, you're in an umbrella. You got a poncho on. You got like scuba gear. You got goggles, right? You're dry as a bone. Those dudes are out there running around in the mud, splashing, freezing their butts off. And you're like, I'm cold. Shut up. You're not a football fan. Go, <laughs> go the other side. If we were in Jackson, never mind. Uh, sorry, that wasn't nice. Uh, okay. It's so, man, it is, <laughs> sorry, it is, it, we, we have to get this thing. There are so many opportunities to complain. There are so many opportunities. It's natural. Man, how many of you have to work at complaining? Anybody have to, get, you've been working on that this week? I'm like, I don't complain enough. Anybody, <laughs> anybody ever got that? Is there, no? No? Okay, good. Whew. All right. Uh, so, uh, so, no, we, we complain naturally. It just pops out, man. And hopefully that, be, that was part of your awareness this week. Like, wow, how much do I really complain? 
wow, how much am I, is a negative? I don't like this guy, and I don't like that guy, and I don't like that car, and I don't like this thing about Cody, and this thing sucks about church, and this thing sucks about my life, and it's easy. The supernatural is when we have gratitude and are thankful. It's when God starts to shake things. He starts to shake us, changes us, transforms us. You're like, okay, Ben, all right, all right, all right, we get it. Good. Now how do we grow in it? Getting it is awesome. Right, so now you've had two weeks to get complaining, to get gratitude. All right, awesome. How? How do I grow in gratitude? How do I want to grow? I don't want to live in the wilderness. I want to live in the promised land. Man, I, I want, even, even though bad things happen, I want to be able to be grateful. Paul said, again, he says in Ephesians 5, 20, always giving thanks to God, the Father for everything. <laughs> okay, Paul, we get it. How? Well, it's like many other things. How do I grow in gratitude? Feedback. We could call it coaching. First, from God. There's so much of his word that talks about this. Over 100 times, gratitude, gratefulness, thankfulness is mentioned. That's the first place we always go. We want to have, tra have our lives transformed, we go to the word. We want to have our lives transformed, go to the word. We memorize the word. We look in the word. What does God say? You've been hearing that this morning. So coaching, feedback. Feedback on, man, am I, that's why I asked you to ask other people that will be honest with you. If you don't have people that will be honest with you, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother sermon. Okay, we need to get those. Do I, do I complain? Am I complaining? Open those doors. Am, am I complaining? Get that feedback. And then it's this. It's like anything else from school to your work to your job to football. Coaches, how do we get better? Ah, very good. It's it like stereo over here. Good job. You practice. You want to get better at this? First, you submit to the Holy Spirit because that is the one that empowers all of it. But then you practice. You practice. I have here practice, practice, practice. Dr. Brene Brown has written a lot on this. Uh, she's awesome. It's some good read. She's a believer. Here's her quote. The relationship between, and, and this is out of her research, which is awesome as science catches up and, and psychology catches up to God. It's awesome. The relationship between joy and gratitude was one of the, one of the important things I found in my research. I wasn't expecting it. In my 12 years of research on 11,000 pieces of data, I, didn't, I did not interview one person who described themselves as joyful who also did not actively practice gratitude. For me, it was, a very counter, it was very counterintuitive because I went into the research thinking that the relationship between joy and gratitude was, if you're joyful, you should be grateful. But it wasn't that way at all. Instead... Practicing gratitude invites joy into our lives. Huh. Practice is the part that really changed my life. That really changed my family and the way we live every day. When I say practice gratitude, I don't mean the attitude of gratitude, quotes, right? We all have, we have, or feeling grateful, I mean practicing gratitude. Do you practice gratitude? She goes on to describe one of the things, the very rudimentary thing she did is, what do we do at, at, when, at Thanksgiving time? We give thanks. What do we do with the table at Thanksgiving time? Around the table. Pray and share something you're thankful for. She's like, why don't we do that every meal? I was like, I read that. I was like, oh, snap. I, mean, I was like, I got to add something. All right, all right. And she said that changed, and she went on to explain how that changed. And, and sometimes it would be little things, like I, I started this. We did it with our family last night. He's like, I'm thankful for, is there anything crazy? Uh, nothing crazy. Uh, it, sometimes it's going to be little. I'm thankful for the food, or I'm thankful for my cat, or I'm thankful for <laughs> not, uh, or I'm thankful for whatever. But then she's like, it was amazing. My, one, of my, one, of my, one of my daughter's little friends, her mom died. And so for a month. My daughter was saying, I'm thankful that my mommy is out of the hospital. Woo. But she said, there's so many things that came out of that practice, simple practice of every time we sit down, everyone at the table is going to give something they're truly grateful for. Oh, that's good. Adding that one. All right. Bringing that into practice. Here's another thing. You guys are going to get, we made a, uh, we call it a gratitude playbook. All right. We need playbooks, right? <laughs> yeah. Might be obsessed with football. All right. All right. Guilty. But you're going to get it when you leave. It's, it's just a three-hole punch, and there's, some, there's like ten pages of, of, this, of this, this gratefulness. 
uh, uh, and it, check it out. I, this is, I, I thought as I was like, okay, I was asking Kelsey and Nicole, they were working on it. Kelsey was making it. I said, and I was figuring out where I was not good. And so I, I, I needed, there was, there was things I'm grateful for. And then there's a column that, that shows when I actually thank God for them. <laughs> I needed both of those because I was missing one. There's also a column of people that I'm grateful for for that week. It's made to be in a week. It's like seven blanks. And then there's a little checkbox that where I actually express that to them. I need that practice. I need that, man. I need that to get it. Okay, how do I get this gratefulness out of my heart? It's there, but how do I get it out? And, and then there's a, a spot where you can write uh, on the back of your outline right now. You have a good start for some memory verses to memorize. It's a good start. There's a hundred others, okay? This is a good start to a place where you can write the scripture you're memorizing on thankfulness and gratitude this week. It's not, none of that's revolutionary. There's a ton of it out there. I didn't, it's not original to me. Uh, but it is what, I'm like, how do I grow here? Can we put this in? Can we put this in? So it fits me really well. If it doesn't, you, nah, no. Uh, no, it, sh- it should be helpful. Use that. We can make you more inserts if you need them. Uh, you can copy them. Use that. That's practicing gratitude. That's practicing thankfulness. There's also another way. We're having a worship night here, by the way, Thursday, September 29th, right? Check, let me make sure I got my, yes, September 29th, 6.30, it's 6.30 to 8 p.m., not 8.30, uh, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, for those of you worried about getting kiddos to bed, uh, it's 6.30 to 8, and uh, we are going to simply, we have tried to do everything we can to bring in the most worshipful songs we can to bring praise and worship to our Savior, amen? This is an awesome time. Come at, you say, well, there, show me that in Scripture. I'm glad you said that. I'm so glad because Psalms 92.1 says this. It is good to praise the Lord. You can leave that up there so they keep remembering. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of ten-string lyre or the electric guitar uh, and the melody of the harp uh, or, or the drums. Uh, for, for you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I will sing for joy at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord. How profound are your thoughts. This isn't something we're just making up to come thank God with songs. This is something all through Scripture. It's even, you say, well, that's the Old Testament. Good, I'm glad you said that too. Listen to Colossians. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. Check this out. With all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. You see, this thing of gratitude is woven through almost everything we see in Scripture. And here it is on a worship night. So, man, I, I'm challenging you. Come out. It will be a practice of worship. Man, we were trying to uh, get old songs that you guys really worshiped your heads off with. And, and there's a few new songs sprinkled in. But it is going to be a night of thankfulness and worship to God. I'm helping you. I'm helping us practice it. This will be fun. It will be awesome. Put it aside. Thursday, 29th, 630 to 8. And you say, well, I can't get there till 7. That's fine. Just come. I can't get there till 6.45, till whatever. Just come and worship and thank God with us. Ask yourself these questions. Am I seeing the blessings of gratefulness in my life? Am I choosing thankfulness in my life, moment by moment, day by day? Ask yourself those questions. We need to start to practice. We need to see kids coaching and also the, from those around us. You're like, man, that person's grateful. Get around that person. Get around that person. Man, that person's always saying, hey, that person is grateful to God. Uh, get around that person. Get some more coaching in your life. We got to practice, practice, practice. You know, I was bummed. I almost moved this. Bless you, by the way. Uh, I almost moved this. Because I'm like, oh, that would be a great message before Thanksgiving, right? And then I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Now check this out. Right? Thanksgiving is what date? The November 25th. Good job. Wow, that was that was quick. You were right there. November 25th. We got two months to practice. I want at the end of this series, my prayer is that kicking this thing of complaining out of our lives 
practicing and making this thing of gratitude and thankfulness to God first and to others around us. I want to hear the stories that are going to come. I promise you there will be stories in your life if you do this. I don't care where you are in that continuum. I don't care where you are. Man, you might be really good at it. If you make this a point, if you're like, okay, I, I'm going to be more grateful and Holy Spirit help me and I'm going to I'm memorize these verses and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice and I'm going to do it. There will be stories. I want to hear them. At the end of the series, we're going to have time for you to share those stories. stories. Write them down. As God is changing you, as you walk through your, your playbook of gratitude, as, as those changes happen in your heart and your family and your marriage and your workplace, write those down. That's God at work. Do it. And we're going to get to hear some awesome stories. And we're going to be ready. For, man, you know how ready we're going to be for those Thanksgiving tables? We'll be like, whoo, we are good. This is just another meal. I'm ready. You're gonna, your family's going to be like, what is the matter with this person? The gratefulness is going to ooze from you, as it should. That's what God wants for you. Some awesome things will come from that. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're done. It's so cool where this landed with communion today. Because the very start for a Christian and the place we need to reset to often <laughs> as the Bible. I mean, why do you think God says come back to this thing of communion and the Lord's Supper and thinking about what Jesus did for you? Why? He knows just like Moses did our hearts that we, we forget and man, when we're saved, we're aware, like, oh, I'm a sinner, and I had no hope without Jesus. And, and especially, man, when you're saved later in life, and you realize, and that transformation happens, and the sanctification starts to happen, and you're like, oh, how could I not be thankful? But then it grows dim. And we forget what Jesus really did for us. <laughs> this thing of Lord's Supper, this thing of communion, it's all about gratefulness. It's all about reminding ungrateful hearts we need to be grateful. We're saved. Jesus died for us. Jesus shed his blood for us. So wherever this is hitting you, I didn't ask for any raised hands. I want you to deal with this in your heart with God. As the elements are going to be passed here in just a moment. I want you to take whatever God is doing in that and run to that foot of that cross. Say, God, I, man, I haven't been focused enough on you. Jesus, I haven't been grateful. Uh, whatever it is and wherever it's hitting you, take that to him, dump it there. The complaining, dump it there. That old mindset, the me mindset, dump it there. And then we look up to see his mindset of gratitude. You look up on that cross and you look up in what was done for you and done for me. That blood running down. That covered your sins. That bridged the gap. The sin that you and I could never bridge. To a savior. From a savior to a father. That's what we're grateful for. That's the core of our faith. It's Jesus. That's where gratitude starts. You do that work with him. As elements are passed, I'll come back up. We'll take them together.
Jesus, we just love you. We thank you so much for your blood that you shed. We thank you for your body that is broken for us. We thank you for our salvation. God, I, I apologize where I'm remiss. God, that should be something that's on my heart and head every day, hourly, moment by moment. You saved me from an eternity in hell. You gave me eternity in heaven. Not only that, you made me a child of the king. Jesus, you did all this at an incredible personal cost. Thinking of that darkness, Jesus. The darkness that you went through there in the Garden of Gethsemane. That darkness where even as God, it got cloudy for you. You said, you asked God, if it be possible, take this cup from me. And seeing you in that dark place. Oh, not because you're a sinner or there was any portion of sin in you. But the circumstances were as heavier than anything we can imagine, Jesus. You were going to be separated for a time from your father. You were going to have the weight of all of our sins put on your shoulders. You're going to be beaten and abused and tortured for us. And yet, you chose to have gratitude and submission and follow what your father said. That's awesome, Jesus. You taught us. Over and over, you taught us. From the lepers to the, to the garden, you taught us. And Jesus, we want to learn from you. We thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you for what you continue to do for us. We, we thank you how you will change and transform us. And you promise that you, when you begin this work in us, that you will continue it into completion. Jesus, please keep changing us to be like you. We praise you, and it's right now we remember you as we drink this bread, this cup, and eat this bread in remembrance of who you are and what you've done, Jesus. We love you. Let's stand and worship him. was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. But sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul. For the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of fire. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have seen my darkness into glorious light. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out 
again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood. You've got a hand. That's, that's awesome. I love you guys. Test. How do we grow? Coaching. Practice. 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 When is the worship night? Ooh, this is a pop quiz. 29th at what time? 6.30. All right. All right. Come out. Let's be thankful together. Good. You guys passed the test. You don't even need to put a curve on that sucker. All right. Uh, all right. I love you all. Last phrase, I heard it, I think this week, I heard it sometime, popped in my head. You don't have to feel grateful to be grateful. It's just free, it's just free. You don't have to feel grateful to be grateful. Do it, go out, practice, ask the Holy Spirit for his help, get coaching, practice, 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 add some of those things to your family, your life. Grab those notebooks on the way out, if we run out, we'll have more, but grab the, there's a the simple folder, uh, and use them, Amen. Amen? That's what we give them to you for. Use them. Not, not to stick in your Bible, all right? Not to stick on your dashboard. That's to go home. That's your prayer life, by the way. I, I, I don't need to spell it out. When you're being thankful, when you're writing, if you're not used to journaling, that's kind of what this is, a little light taste of that. And you, this is your time with God. This is your time you're talking to him about what you're grateful for. Your time you're asking him to show you who, who you need to express that gratitude for in your life. And we do this every week. We do this every day. All right? All right, this will, I can't wait. I'm so stoked, man. I am so stoked to hear what this, hap, what happens in our, your lives and your families. All right, amen?
All right, so make sure don't lose those stories, all right? When you have them, write it down, shoot me a text, email me, get it on Facebook, whatever else. You just get it on there. Get me that story. I want to hear what God's doing. Amen? All right, I love you guys. Boxes are by the back doors. Make sure you're faithful with our tithes and offerings, uh, that we can be faithful with those needs that you bring in, and we want to help with those. And uh, prayer times, Thursday, noon right here, 630, 